my good side? Do I have a good side? Do I have a bad side? What's going on guys? My name is Sean and I'm here to show you how to build your own LED Kino Flow lighting. Now for those of you that already know what Kino Flows are, just go ahead and skip this section if you want to. There should be a table of contents in the description block below. For those of you that don't know what Kino Flows are, they're essentially the industry standard when it comes to video lighting. I'm actually using the ones that I built myself to light myself. Allow myself to introduce myself. Um, yeah, so I'm not a videographer uh, per se. This is actually the first video that I've ever created and filmed and posted to YouTube. Uh, traditionally, I, I just do still photography, but uh, I was inspired by this New York based photographer named Peter Hurley. He does headshots for a living, um, and I think he charges about $1,500 for his each headshot, headshot, headshot session. Headshot session. Why is that so hard to say? So if you've never heard of uh, Peter Hurley, you should definitely go check out his work. Uh, he's a real funny dude, real personable. Uh, he's, he's like one of those dudes you can invite over to your house on Sundays and kick back and watch the game and you know have a beer with. I don't know, he probably likes badminton. Peter Hurley, do you like badminton? Uh, if you happen to come across this video, let me know if you like badminton. And uh, while you're at it, send me a copy of your new book. Oh, I did some research on Kino Flows to see kind of how much they are and uh, what they're all about. And come to find out, they were uh, in the thousand dollar range per light. Now, if you bought four of them, uh, similar to how Peter Hurley likes to use his lights, uh, that's about four grand. And that's a lot of money, especially for someone like me who doesn't do photography as my career. Uh, I've been blessed. I, I have a job. Uh, that allows me to purchase a lot of photography equipment, but a thousand dollars for uh, a light is is not something that I wanted to do. And so uh, I did some research on them, and I was like, well, they're essentially just fluorescent lights on a stand. You know, why can't I just go down to the local hardware store and you know I've got a broomstick, I've got duct tape, and why can't I just get some fluorescent lights and Bam, we've got some Kino flows. Uh, but it, uh, come to find out, uh, that, that wasn't exactly the case. Uh, so I did a little more research to find out, well, what makes Kino flows Kino flows? One, and probably most importantly, is Kino flows have a CRI of 95. Now, CRI stands for Color Rendering Index, and it's a scale from 0 to 100, 100 being the best. Uh, color rendering that you can get out of your light. Now 95 is, is pretty good. And the standard fluorescent bulbs that you typically pick up at your local hardware store range from anywhere from, I believe, 50 to, to 80 CRI. The other nice thing about Kino Flows is uh, there are a lot of mounting options. Uh, they come, I assume, ready to mount to light stands. And I believe uh, there's all sorts of mounting options for ceiling fixtures and uh, I'm sure a bunch of other stuff. The thing about them is they're dimmable, I think. Uh, but I, I believe, somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but when they say dimmable, it's really just turning off individual bulbs in the fixture to get less light out of them. And I don't, I don't know if I really count that as uh, dimmable in, in the truest sense of the word, but uh, I mean, I, I, guess, I guess it works. So I really couldn't figure out why these things cost so much money. And I'm sure they're a very high quality product. I'm sure there are things that videographers need out of them that I'm not really listing. Uh, but for my personal uses, I could not justify spending over a thousand dollars for one Kino Flow. Now, uh, the other thing I didn't like about them is they're made out of fluorescent bulbs. So they're extremely fragile. And if you break one, it releases this nasty uh, sodium or mercury based gas into the air. It's not something you want to breathe in. Uh, so that's the other thing I did. I wasn't a big fan of with Kino Flows. Well, when deciding to build or attempt to build these lights, I came up with this list of about six or seven things that I wanted out of them, if possible. Uh, the first one being that I wanted them to be a high CRI, preferably above 90. Uh, I wanted them to be easily reproducible, something easy to make. Because I knew I, I wanted to make more than just one of them. I wanted them to be mountable and adjustable 
so I could uh, move them around in different angles and things like that. I wanted them to be somewhat daylight balanced, so anywhere from 4,500 Kelvin to 6,500 Kelvin. I didn't need a variable temperature light. Uh, I didn't really want to deal with that, and um, but I did want them to be dimmable, and dimmable in the truer sense of the word dimmable, not just turning off bulbs. The other thing I wanted is I wanted them to be, uh, as far as my budget went, under about $200. I didn't want to spend anything really more than that. Uh, one of the things I, I didn't need out of them is for them to be ultra portable. I uh, didn't expect to be moving these around from location to location. Um, all right, so this is my version of a Kino Flow. Uh, these tubes are made out of LED. These are LED tubes. Um, and then this is just a shop light that I purchased at Lowe's for about 50 bucks. Um, these lights I purchased on Amazon. Uh, I'll get more into these bulbs later, but uh, they're very similar to fluorescent bulbs, but they're uh, not as fragile because they're essentially made out of this frosted plastic. Um, and they work with normal fluorescent uh, T8 fixtures. Uh, you just have to do a little bit of extra wiring uh, to bypass the fluorescent ballast. And there's all sorts of instructions on YouTube on how to do this. Um, but at the end of this video, I'll actually show you how I wired these up um, in this specific scenario. Okay. Uh, on the back, to make it mountable, I uh, attached this plate. Uh, there's a plate on this side and a plate on that side. I drilled a hole that was uh, 5 8 inch uh, in, in diameter, and then I used a threaded bolt uh, that was about six inches long uh, and then just attached it with a, uh, a nut, a lock nut, I don't know, one of those nuts with the white stuff in it, that sounds weird. <laughs> I'm probably not going to use this in the video, but uh, here's the dimmer uh, down here, uh, attached it right yeah, with uh, through a hole, and I at the end of the video, I'll show you how I hooked up this specific dimmer as well. Uh, so I'll go ahead and there that goes. I'll go ahead and uh, turn this guy on uh, and blind you probably. So uh, there's the light, and it's dimmable, and I'll flip it off. Now, for videographers out there thinking about uh, building this, I will warn you there is a slight buzz that comes uh, out of these. And to be honest with you, I'm not really sure if that's coming from the light bulbs or uh, the fact that uh, this dimmer, uh, I don't know if it's coming from the, the dimmer or the bulbs or this specific dimmer in combination with the bulbs. Uh, I really don't know. I haven't tested the bulbs out without the dimmer, but if that's gonna affect you uh, in your video making, um, you know, make that something to think about. It really. Uh, doesn't affect me and the work I do and the microphone does a, a, a really good job of not picking up that vibration, but it's something or a buzz, buzz. So it's something to uh, think about if you're thinking about building your own. Now, uh, these LED bulbs I bought on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. They are a high CRI, they're a CRI of 95. Uh, they're cool to the touch, uh, and they're about 4,500 Kelvin. I have no idea what the exposure is on the camera right now, if I'm like overexposed or not, but uh, they're about 4,500 Kelvin, so it's going to take me about a half CTO gel to, to daylight balance my strobes with these, well, which isn't, isn't too bad at all. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. And then uh, uh, this bolt I attached to a Matthews grip, uh, which uh, should be on the screen right now. Uh, and that's attached to a C-stand, uh, which gives it a nice solid base. Now, if you don't have a C-stand, I probably recommend getting one. Uh, I think they're a good investment, especially with these, uh, these lights. And these, these lights actually aren't that heavy. 
I don't know, I'd, I'd probably guess like 20 pounds, if that. Uh, don't knock yourself out with it, though. If you learned something and you liked uh, anything that you saw, uh, go ahead and like uh, the video below so I, so I know uh, if I did an alright job or not, I guess. Uh, I don't know, that's, what, that's just what people ask for on YouTube. Uh, who knows? Like I said, this is my first video, so if you've got any uh, comments or critiques, uh, things I could do better, uh, throw them in the comments below. I'll put a link to uh, where I purchased everything in the comments below or the uh, description section below. And also, if you want to stick around, uh, at the very end of this video, i show you how I hook up the, the dimmer and how I convert this from a fluorescent fixture to an LED fixture. And uh, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed, and uh, hopefully I'll make another video sometime soon. Bye. This is a DIY video on how to make Kino Flow lightings. Uh, hello, Duncan. You back for more? i got to get in the camera so people will actually think that I'm not talking to just the carpet. How about? Or not. I swear there's a dog here. This is the part where I'm going to talk about uh, the fluorescent fixture LED conversion. Uh, basically, I'm going to be removing the ballast, uh, which is this uh, white guy right there. And that's because the LED bulbs that I bought require that uh, you remove the ballast. Here's the light fixture that I bought from Lowe's for about 50 bucks. While I've got the camera pointed this way, I'm just going to show you a few things. Uh, this is a hole that I cut out to fit the dimmer. And then this is the green ground wire. And we'll talk about that more when I talk about hooking up the, the dimmer. Alright, so now that the ballast is removed, I'm going to be wiring this up. Now, uh, the way I wire this up may be a little different from the way you wire it up because the LED tubes that I bought are uh, powered on both ends. Now, if your LED tubes are powered on just one end, uh, you're going to have to wire this up a little differently. So, basically, I'm going to be uh, hooking up the blue and red wires with the black wire that came off of the ballast. Okay, and I'm going to use uh, wire nuts for those. Yeah, nice and tight. And then I'm going to connect the white and the yellow wires together with a wire nut as well. Um, basically, after this step, if we weren't installing a dimmer, uh, we'd pretty much be done with the wiring. So this is the specific dimmer that I'm using for this build. If you don't feel real comfortable about installing a dimmer, you probably shouldn't do it. This isn't meant to be a how to install a dimmer tutorial. So, uh, But the key thing that you need to look out for is that you want your dimmer to be rated uh, at least the amount of power wattage that your lights are. So I know my my four light bulbs that I'm going to be using are well within the 150 watt range, which is what this specific dimmer is rated for. So you want to keep an eye on that. And also that this specific dimmer can handle LED as opposed to uh, other dimmers that can only handle incandescent or halogen. So when you wire up a dimmer, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, your dimmer will be slightly different I'm sure, unless you get the exact same, but the general concept should be the same. This light, or this green wire over here, is going to be the ground that hooks up to the ground on the fixture. We've got uh, a red wire, black wire, and a red and white. Alright, so 
this is just a normal extension cord that I've cut because I was using it for another uh, project. And if you were to split an extension cord like this, you get two wires. Okay. Uh, one wire is hot, one wire is the neutral wire. Uh, as you can see, uh, one side has a ribbed side. So let me uh, get a better view of that. That's the ribbed side. Okay. And the other one is uh, smooth, even though it's a little dirty. But it's uh, smooth and then ribbed. So your rib side is going to be your neutral side, and the smooth side is going to be your hot side. And that that's the hot side is going to be the one that we're going to split and cut uh, and hook up to our red and black wire on our dimmer. All right, so I've located my hot wire. I'm going to cut those. I'm going to strip those with my strippers. Wire strippers, not those kind of strippers. <laughs> okay. And maybe a little. And it really doesn't matter which one goes to which. I'm going to make this black wire go to that red wire. Next thing I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to twist tie some of this stuff and uh, that'll be it.